Hello, welcome back. Today we're talking about the orphan spirit. This is a spirit that many people have, and I pray today that if you watch this video that you will recognize an orphan spirit if you have one, and that you will make efforts to rid yourself of it, because that is God's will for you. So let's talk about the orphan spirit. The orphan spirit in Greek, it's orphanos, and it means bereaved, parentless, or fatherless. It is a very sorrowful spirit. It is a very despairing spirit, and it comes through experiences that we have in life that cause us to feel or have the perception that we are abandoned or rejected. Remember, too, that abandonment and rejection are the two foundational wounds of 90% of the people in the world that are wounded. It is re abandonment and rejection. Okay, so orphanos is bereaved, parentless, or fatherless. So somewhere in your soul, from something that happened to you, there is a sorrow and a feeling that you've been abandoned or rejected, and you feel that you don't have a parent in that place or in that incident, and that especially that you don't have a father. Okay, so what does Jesus say about this? He says in John 14, 18, I will not leave you as orphans. So if he says, I will not leave you as orphans, why are so many of us not experiencing him as not leaving us as orphans? Well, it's because of this orphan spirit. Jesus Christ has done, of course, what he said he would do. He's not left us as orphans. He's with us all the time. But this orphan spirit can block you from experiencing a lot of things in the Lord. Okay, so in the emotional upheaval that we go through sometimes in our childhoods or older, um, we can have an upheaval of a lifetime of hurts, disappointments, traumas. And during these times, we mistakenly come to a false conclusion about ourselves and about other people. Okay, let's give an example. So, here's an example. Um, let's, let me read this. This is a, like a personal testimony of somebody. My parents got divorced when I was six years old. Throughout the years of my parents' fighting and separation, I blamed myself for the divorce. I also concluded that I was defective because my dad left me. Okay, so this is a little child. She's six years old, and her parents are fighting a lot. Finally, they separate and get divorced. During this whole time, the child's trying to figure out what's going on and what she has to do with it. And she really has nothing to do with it chances are, but she will assume that she has something to do with it. And so the two false beliefs that she took out of this divorce situation, the first one was, it's my fault. The divorce is my fault. Therefore, I'm guilty. I'm bad. That could be one false belief or lie that she took out of the divorce. The second one she could have taken out of the divorce was, I'm alone, I'm defective, I'm rejected, men will leave you, watch out for men because they'll leave you, and men are untrustworthy. So these are false beliefs that a child can take in their heart and it can invite a an orphan spirit. So common lies that those with an orphan spirit will believe are something like these. Nobody loves me. I'm worthless. I'm the only one. I'm invisible. I'm helpless. Everyone else can be loved by God, but not me. Okay, so when we as children, we're trying to figure everything out. We've got our little minds are working, trying to figure out what's going on. We make When we make false conclusions about ourselves during these troubled times, we internalize these false beliefs or lies in our hearts, in our souls, inside of us. And remember, as the father of lies, who owns all false belief and lies? Whose territory is that? 
it is Satan's territory. He is the father of lies. So anywhere there is lies or false beliefs, that's his area. And he will claim it. So as the father of lies, Satan's territories include all false beliefs and lies, among others. When we give a lie or a false belief a place or a home in our souls, he gains that territory and he knows it. And he takes authority over it immediately or sometimes gradually. And then his correlating unclean spirits will rule in that place until the territory is reclaimed and the spirit or spirits ousted. Okay, so those lies that we believe that I listed before and some like that, they invite an oppressive demonic spirit to invade the soul with a false belief system. The orphan, the person who is carrying the orphan spirit, then experiences a permanent soul separation from other people. He or she may experience worry, loneliness, fear, anxiety. And on top of that, as the spirit is making its home in the ch child's or older person's soul, every situation that is similar to that afterwards, it confirms that lie in your heart. So your dad left you, men are, men will leave you and men are untrustworthy. So then later your boyfriend leaves you. See, I knew it. All men will leave you and they're not trustworthy. So you keep validating it and confirming it the more situations you come into. And it nails the lies further into your soul. Some people say, yeah, that's my luck. See, that's confirming a lie that you took in a long time ago. So the growing mental fortress that is multiplying inside you must be destroyed or it will be passed to the next generation and be active in your children, your grandchildren. Those with an orphan spirit battle these lies and they struggle to feel a connection with God. Um, I want to read you some of the traits of those with, who have an orphan spirit and then we'll talk about healing. So some of the traits that we can have if we have an orphan spirit would be that we don't feel a connection with other people, especially with God. We don't feel a connection. We have the belief that God can love everybody, but not me. If you have an orphan spirit, there's always a work hard mentality. I must work really hard to make up for the fact that I'm abandoned, rejected, defective, whatever the lie is. You're trying to compensate with hard work to make up for the lie that's in your soul. They are ashamed to ask for good things from God. If you feel ashamed or you struggle to ask for good things from God, then that may be an orphan spirit. If you've never felt accepted, if you feel abandoned or rejected, remember those are the two foundational wounds of people. If you respond to that situation, whatever it was when you were little, by performance and achievement, that is just a telling trait a lot of times of an orphan, someone with an orphan spirit. If you struggle with identity, you want to identify with Christ, but it's just not going in. You feel blocked or limited in your understanding and experiential reality of that. You are competitive. You're always competing. You're wanting to do more, but you're never really satisfied inside. Perfectionism makes you miserable. That can be an orphan spirit. If you struggle receiving the Father's love, that can be very indicative. If you have emptiness and neediness in your heart, no matter how you try to hide it or medicate it with different things, it's still there and it hurts. If you are emotionally unstable, you may hold it together in front of other people when you're in public, but at home with your family, with um, different people, you're just emotionally unstable. 
if you struggle in relationships, if you have a deep void from the breach of trust that happened when you were little, if you can't receive Jesus as your first love, as in Revelation 2, 4, you can't receive him as your first love and you don't know why. If you isolate yourself, if you're very independent, codependent, independent, I can do everything on my own. I'm never going to ask anyone. No, I'll do it all. That. If you have fear and insecurity, if you're a performance-oriented person, and in the faith that would be, I'm going to perform, I'm going to achieve, I'm going to do these works, and this is going to make up for this problem I'm having that I don't want to acknowledge. If you're jealous of other people, if you serve God, now this may not be in your conscious mind, but it may be in your subconscious. If you're serving God to earn his love and acceptance, I just have to keep working to earn his love and acceptance. This is a cycle that could have been going on since you were young and you don't understand it and you don't recognize it. You medicate the pain through activity. Let me do this, do that, do this, do that. You have trouble sitting still and feeling your heart and tending to your heart. You don't like that. Uh, you're driven to succeed. You use people to fulfill goals in your life. You somehow repel your children. Your children don't come to you and want to be around you a lot. They are just not hanging out around you. You can have anger and fits of rage. You can lack uh, God esteem. You can't seem to get your esteem from God. You're controlled by an orphan spirit. You have a limited understanding of your identity and purpose. And you may have a limited ability to maximize your potential in the faith. Okay, there's no condemnation or any embarrassment or anything for any of these things, but this is just how it is on uh, earth, um, when, you know, sin enters, everything goes haywire. So in Psalm, uh, 142, four here, um, David cried, no one attends to me. No one cares for my soul. He was crying out. He felt abandoned or rejected and he was crying out to God. So questions to ask yourself, do I have deep emotional wounds from my past? Have I blocked out some events of my childhood? Are there truths about my past that I refuse to acknowledge? Do I make choices out of my insecurities? Do I often get jealous of the success of other people? Do I try to earn God's love with activity and works? Do I protect myself by withdrawing? Do I feel unworthy, defective, or not good enough? Do I feel empty and try to fill that emptiness with work? physical appearance, self-gratification, narcissistic behavior, or self-indulgent behavior? Am I driven to succeed? Do I have the mindset that I will succeed at all cost? Do I use people to fulfill my goals? Do I repel my children or your spiritual children? Do I struggle with anger and fits of rage? Do other people in my family struggle with anger and fits of rage, my children? That would be a generational curse going down. Do I always compete with others? Do I lack self-esteem? Do I find my identity in physical appearance, activities, work, or possessions? Do I strive for perfection? Do I identify myself through my career, title, achievements, possessions, appearance, sports, activities, or pleasures? So what we can do since if you've spotted anything in here that sounds like you and you feel like you could have an orphan spirit or you know someone who could what are some things you can do well the first thing you need to know that the one way that the orphan spirit gets healed is by spending time in the father's presence spending time in the father's presence getting to know him getting to know him okay that's a huge huge point of healing Psalm 1611 says, You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So what can you do if you feel you have an orphan spirit? What you can do is you can ask the Lord to give you a revelation 
of God as your personal, loving, and accepting Heavenly Father. That's the first thing you can do. Um, right there. And then we need to receive from God the grace from Him to rest in our God-given identity, know that we belong fully in His family, and that we can rest in the security of His love and continual care. And in that, we can experience the fullness of His undeserved grace and favor. And when we are stressed or weary of facing challenges that come along, we can fall back into an orphan mentality instead of resting in the Father's love. Be aware of that. But most of all, what do we need? Spending time in the Father's love and in His presence, we need the spirit of adoption, right? What does every orphan want? To be adopted, right? In the orphanages. Well, if you have a spirit, an orphan spirit, you in your heart wish that you could be adopted, that somebody would love you, right? So what you do is... Here's a list of things that you can do for healing. You're going to renounce, rebuke, renounce, and cast out the spirit, the orphan spirit. You're going to ask for a revelation of God's love as you spend time in the Father's presence. You're going to receive the spirit of adoption. Okay? Those are the main three um, ones. These, these two can go together. Okay, so let me read you a little bit in a prayer, and then I'll go over some verses for you. If you have an orphan spirit, you can absolutely renounce it and cast it out in the name of Jesus, along with every lie that gives it permission to remain in your soul, remain active in your soul. The Holy Spirit will show you this, okay? Ask Him to help you. Since you are the sheriff of your soul, you call the shots you decide which spirits stay and which spirits must leave. Instead of keeping an orphan spirit, you can receive instead the father's spirit of adoption or sonship or daughtership. It's the manifestation of God's spirit with a prophetic declaration of healing and restoration to sonship. I had serious orphan spirit and I took authority over my soul and I cast it out. Then I prayerfully asked the Lord to send me the spirit of adoption, and I told him that I was ready to receive it. He did. I felt the change within me for the better. I had more peace, more connection with him, and more clear direction from him. So bring all of your past hurts, disappointments, and traumas to God and ask him to heal them. Ask him to pull out the root of the orphan spirit and every branch and all residue of the orphan spirit within you. Then ask him for a revelation of his love for you. Receive the spirit of adoption from the Heavenly Father. Ask him to remove everything that's blocking your relationship with him, one day at a time, one prayer at a time. And here's a prayer if you want to pray it. Lord, I didn't know it, but I have had an orphan spirit most of my life. Thank you for showing it to me. I'm no longer in agreement with this evil spirit and its lies about me. Orphan spirit, I'm speaking to you. I rebuke you and renounce you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke and renounce every lie that I believed about myself. I command you, orphan spirit, and every lie from it to leave me right now. I cast out from my soul the orphan spirit and every lie about myself in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to give me in its place the spirit of adoption as your beloved child. I receive it deep into my heart. Thank you for choosing me and adopting me. I'm so glad that you are my perfect Heavenly Father. I belong to your family now, where I am safe and secure in your love. Help me to know you more and to trust you more. In Jesus' name. Now, one little point we have to make after that. If you feel uncomfortable thinking about praying that prayer, if you feel silly or that that's not necessary or that's going too far or anything that would discourage you from praying that prayer, I will tell you definitively that that is the orphan spirit manipulating you to let it stay there and control you. Okay? Satan is not an idiot. When he has a territory, he's hell-bent on keeping it. And he does everything he can to do that. Okay, so let's go over some of these scriptures down here. Romans 8, 14 through 15. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. 
For you did not receive a spirit of slavery that returns you to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And Galatians 4, 6. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. 1 Corinthians 12, 18. But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. Ephesians 1, 5, and 6. He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Matthew 10, 29 through 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So do not fear, you are more valuable than many sparrows. And then, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting the whole of your care, that means all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on the Lord. For he cares for you affectionately, and he cares about you watchfully. All right, so that's just an overview of the orphan spirit. We've looked at the meaning of it what Jesus has to say about it, and what blocks us from experiencing this verse. The things we've been through in our childhood. I gave an example of a little girl whose parents got divorced at age six and the lies she internalized. We've um, remembered and reviewed that all lies and false beliefs are the territory of the devil. We went over many, many, many traits that you can have if you have a, an orphan spirit. And we went over some definite and sure ways to heal if you have an orphan spirit and the scriptures that will hold you in place while you struggle through this. It is worth it. It is so worth it. So I pray that you will recognize if you have an orphan spirit or someone you know and you will pray and uh, take it out of your soul, command it out in the name of Jesus and you'll receive the spirit of adoption from the Lord. That is his will for you. He wants you to feel connected to him. He wants you to feel like you belong in, in and to his body. He wants you to feel restful in his love and acceptance. He does not want you to be stressed, rushing or striving or straining or trying to uh, perform for him or trying to impress him. That blocks his will being done through you, your human effort. And so the more you get to know the Heavenly Father and you rest in His presence and get to know Him and have a revelation of God's love for you, the more you will calm down, calm down and start to relax and the Holy Spirit can flow through you more freely when you do. And that's one of the reasons Jesus Christ is very much into an internal mental and emotional and spiritual rest. Okay? That is how he works best. All right, so I hope this is helpful, and God bless you guys, and I'll see you soon.